Dopamine is one of the great success stories of theoretical neuroscience. And the story starts several decades ago when neuroscientists came up with a really striking hypothesis about what dopamine was signaling, namely the uh, reward prediction error, the discrepancy between received and experienced reward. And the key evidence for this hypothesis was the observation that when reward is entirely expected, there's no uh, phasic dopamine response. It's only when the reward is unexpected that we see uh, a burst of dopamine. And over the intervening years, this hypothesis has been refined in various ways. And today we're going to tell you about one particular refinement, uh, specifically uh, the extension of this idea to uh, the situation in which an animal has uncertainty about the state of the world. So what does it mean to have uncertainty about the state of the world? Imagine you're at a dive bar and you order a drink. Usually at this bar, it takes about five minutes for your drink to arrive. But occasionally, say in 10% of cases, the bartender completely forgets your order. We can think of this situation using two states. One, where your drink will arrive, and two, where your drink will not arrive. We can't know for certain which state we're in when you first order a drink, hence there is state uncertainty. Instead, because the states are hidden, they have to be inferred. Hidden state inference can be mathematically described using a belief state, which is a probability distribution across states. So when you first put in your order, your belief state could be 90-10, allotting 90% probability to the my drink will come state and 10% to the my drink will not come state. And say after you wait for 10 minutes with no sign of the bartender, your belief state could become more and more pessimistic, allotting more and more probability to the my drink will not come state. Dopamine signals, which Sam just told us, are suppressed by reward expectation, are sensitive to the belief state. We previously recorded dopamine neurons during two classical conditioning tasks that varied the timing of reward delivery relative to cue onset. In the 100% rewarded task, dopamine signals were largest for early rewards as if expectation increased as a function of time. And in the 90% rewarded task, dopamine signals were largest for later rewards as if expectation decreased as a function of time. This can be explained by taking hidden state inference into account. In the 100% rewarded task, the cue unambiguously signals entry into the interstimulus interval state, in which the animal knows for certain that a reward is coming. In the 90% rewarded task, the state is hidden. In 90% of trials, the cue means that the animal has transitioned into this rewarded interstimulus interval state, but in 10% of trials, there is a hidden state transition back into this unrewarded intertrial interval in which the animal will not receive a reward. So in the 100% rewarded task, the belief state is uniformly fixed with 100% probability in the rewarded state after cue onset. Whereas in the 90% rewarded task, by analogy to the dive bar example, the belief state becomes more and more pessimistic over time, resulting in decreased expectation and a higher dopamine signal if reward actually arrives later. In the current study, we inactivated the medial prefrontal cortex using a chemogenetic approach called kappa opioid receptor dread, or CORD for short, which is activated by a designer drug called salvinorin B, or SALB for short, while recording from dopamine neurons in the same two tasks. Here I'm showing some example dopamine neurons we recorded in the 100% rewarded task. In the control condition, similar to before, Neurons showed negative temporal modulation, as if reward expectation increased as a function of time. Upon shutting down the medial prefrontal cortex using SALB, neurons still showed this negative temporal modulation. Now, where this gets more interesting is the 90% rewarded task. Similar to before, in our control condition, dopamine neurons largely showed positive temporal modulation in the 90% rewarded task, as if expectation decreased as a function of time. However, upon shutting down the medial prefrontal cortex, we found many neurons, like this neuron, that showed negative temporal modulation. Here I'm showing a few more examples of neurons recorded in the 90% rewarded task. And you can see that it's not as if these neurons have lost their ability to track time. Instead, the temporal modulation is definitely there, but just in the wrong direction, as if these neurons no longer have access to the appropriate belief state for the 90% rewarded task. In other words, these neurons signaled as if the belief state were erroneously frozen in time. 
to further rule out the possibility that interval timing was affected by medial prefrontal cortex inactivation, we examined dopamine responses to reward omission and found that dopamine neurons still pause their tonic firing levels precisely at the time of an omitted reward in these control trial types with constant Q reward timings. So a representation of when rewards usually arrived seemed to be intact upon medial prefrontal cortex inactivation. Our computational modeling further confirmed our intuition that hidden state inference shaping this belief state across time seemed to be impaired rather than interval timing itself upon medial prefrontal cortex inactivation. Briefly, our model is a temporal difference model that computes value as a linear sum of the belief state and the weights learned for each state. Our model is compatible with the medial prefrontal cortex playing a role in inferring the statistical structure of the environment, which is then used by subcortical reinforcement learning circuits to compute value and errors in value prediction. Inferring the current state of the world is the first step required to make predictions about future and make decisions. This study shows that the medial prefrontal cortex plays an essential role in inferring the state of the world under uncertainty. In the future, we would like to understand what neural processes underlie in the medial prefrontal cortex and how this information gets conveyed to dopamine neurons to compute reward prediction errors.